one of the most important things that I think about in my day is can I bring my Dr. Pepper in to the press conference, right? Like, is it a Pepsi product? Is it a Coke? It's neither. It's in the middle. It's a free agent. So I could bring it and let people see it, and maybe Pepsi's like, man, we need to pick up Dr. Pepper. People like Dr. Pepper, right? Like, there's things that there's a partnership here at some point in time. Um, I, I'm proud of our guys how they played. Um, Nebraska is, they're difficult. They're difficult, I would say. How they play. There, there's some things like playing Purdue, you never see Zach Eadie again, right? So like your preparation's a little bit different. Playing Nebraska, you're not going to see their defense again. So it's like a one-off. Um, how you got to do things against them, how you got to try and score against them. Um, is different than everybody else in the league, and I thought we adjusted pretty well in the second half. Um, I told Fred after the game, and, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. I, I, I've said it multiple times in here that I watch a lot of Nebraska basketball because I love the pace that they play with. They're free-flowing, how they move, like what they do. Um, I told him his group looked really connected. and. Like, you can see it defensively in what they're doing. You can see it offensively in, in how they're playing. And uh, this was a good win for us. I know they're 10 and 10, 3 and 6 in our league, but you know they, they, this is a good win for us. And uh, <laughs> our guys really gutted it out. Uh, Dr. Pepper may be entering the transfer portal, so it could be. Yes. Hey, first uh, call would be for me. Seriously, <laughs> seriously uh, Mike, how do you size up Pick's game? Uh, I mean, you look at the stats, uh, seven turnovers but 13 boards, plus nine, hitting all the shots. How, how, when you look at that game, what kind of goes through your head? It's, um, <laughs> it's funny. Like, you go through it, and, like, if you just look through the box score and you're like, I mean, you had a guy with 12 points, 13 rebounds, you know, five assists. Like, I know he turned it over seven times, but you'd be like, man, he had a really good game. But what he's done so far this year, you feel like he really didn't. But he didn't miss very many shots. Like, he turned the ball over. And that's, you know, I'll put that on me. Like, I got to help him crack the code better of what he's looking for, how to do it, right? There's so much you have to prepare for with these guys. And, you know, we play, now you're getting ready for a couple of days. You play early Saturday afternoon. Like, you can't be out there at practice for two and a half hours trying to break down everything, right? So, you know, we'll watch film with him and get him better, let him see it and understand it. Uh, but I know he's probably pissed at himself, right? He had 12 and 13. Um, I still think he's the best guard in this league and one of the best guards in the country. I haven't watched them all, uh, but he's, he's a first-team All-American in my book. Mike, you mentioned Nebraska's defense. What do they do that's so hard to prepare for? They don't let you in the paint at all, right? Like, it, it's, some, it's some stuff you'll see in the NBA. It's some pre-rotations uh, on the baseline side. They don't let you get to the middle of the floor. Uh, we call it trap the box. They're there early. They zone up on the backside, and now, you know, they force you to – either try and thread the needle into the paint, which is a turnover most of the time against these guys, or you got to throw a skip pass, which, you know, they got a bunch of dudes. You know, you take Tominaga out, everybody else is like 6'6", 6'7", 6'6", 6'8", Walker's like 6'9", or whatever, like long arms, active, fast. Like, that's what we're trying to get to, right? Like, when you see us recruit, um, that's what we're trying to look for, right? That's what Evan Mahaffey, that's... Kerry Booth, right? Dudes like that. Now you're long, you're active defensively. You can really cause chaos in that way. They cause chaos. Um, so I thought our guys did a good job of moving it, swinging it, swinging it, making the extra pass, being unselfish, and then attacking. The first half we didn't attack, and we forgot about ourselves sometimes. Right? Sometimes you attack the rim, and you know, like we were looking to kick it out every time. Right? Part of that's because of me. I talked about. You got to kick out. The play's not going to be in the paint because of they swarm. Um, but we, never, we didn't drive the score. In the second half, I thought we drove the score and got some layups. 
Coach, Andrew Funk had 23 points and five threes tonight. He hit his 250th career three-pointer. And when he's hitting shots, it seems like you guys are a lot more efficient. What is his impact on the game when he is hitting those shots? Yeah, um, you know, we got to find him. We got to look for him and got to get him those opportunities. Like, this was a game we knew he would get those opportunities. There's some games, you, you know, you know that he's not going to get as many and you got to manufacture some for him. Right, because people are playing them in different ways. They have a defensive system that they stay in, right? So they're going to guard the no matter who it is the same exact way, right? Michigan is going to face guard him and not let him catch the ball. They don't care about anybody else on the floor. They care about Andrew Funk, right? So we got to figure out ways uh, when people are doing that to get him more shots, get him more looks, keep him confident um, so he can make those. He's a confident kid when he's. You know, even when he misses a couple, he can come back and make those dagger threes for you. And I, I thought he was doing that for us today. Thank you. Like, maybe I'm just noticing it for the first time, but in the second half in particular, you're like directing traffic offensively on the fly. What's happening there? And what kind of attention does it take from your players to know what you're saying to them to be in the spots that you want to be? Yeah, it's, and sometimes it's hard, right? Because we still don't have, like these guys, we're, 19 games in, there's still a lot of season left. So sometimes I want them to do different things, right? And I got to be patient uh, if they don't quite understand what I'm talking about. And then I can grab them, pull them over to the side, and talk to them about what I'm seeing. So now this is why I want you to do this. Uh, it's easier, right, when they're right in front of me. I think that's that's the one thing is is. We just try and see. We we take time, right? Because everybody, what's my what's my favorite line? They don't allow me to coach both teams, uh, so I don't know how they're going to guard us, right? So the first opportunity that the jump ball happens and we get the ball, I'm looking at who's matched up with who, who's guarding who, who's on picket, how are they guarding this? Right, so now I'm trying to see all of that in real time, and then once we get to like, we can start making adjustments as we go. But then we can really start making adjustments in the second half because I've had I've had 20 minutes to process what's going on, and now we can start, you know, moving the pieces around and put everything where we want it. Mike, did you talk to the refs at all about those two offensive calls on uh, on picket? Because it kind of just looked like those were just typical post up post ups, but. Uh, I guess they called him that time. Yeah. I, no, no, I didn't. Um, I thought the one, the drive, I thought he did grab him. He grabbed Big Fella and kind of pulled his arm a little bit. Um, he might have chicken winged the other guy. I, don't, I'm, I didn't see what was going on. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not watching him. Right? Even though he's got the ball, I want to look off the ball so I can see who's doubling where. So right? Just like what I talked about now, let, let me move some people around because now I know who's doubling from where. So I'm not always looking at him. Um, I trust what he's going to do. I trust he's going to make the right play. Um, I try and limit my conversations with officials. It's helped me. It's helped me. I think it's going to help me live live longer in this life, um, which is, you know, what I'm aiming for. My parents are, my parents are awesome. They were here a couple weeks ago, and uh, – my daughter always talks about their their age and stuff like that. Like, I won't live as long as my parents have lived. So if I can limit my conversations with officials, I think that's going to help me. Like, how much of a balancing act is it uh, when you have a kid like Keba who's who's struggling? I, you know, I guess on one end, you probably want to be critical, but you also realize that, that, that he's young. How do you kind of pull him out of this? Yeah, uh, you know, just got to love him up sometimes, right? Sometimes you got to crack the whip, right? You get a little bit of both. Sometimes it's kid glove. Sometimes it's Mike Tyson glove. Um, but some kind of glove is happening with him. Um, we're, like, he'll be fine. We'll, we'll bring him back in. We'll watch film with him. We'll show him where he, he can get better and where he needs to get better and keep growing. And, like, he's going to start again on Tuesday when we play Rutgers. Like, I, I'm, he's going to have ups and downs. It's going to happen in this league, especially at the position that he's playing. Um, but – here in a couple of years, like hopefully next year. Maybe it's next year, all right? Maybe it's the year after that. I don't know. Uh, but he's going to be one of those guys that, like, 
you know, people are giving him problems. He's going to be giving people the same exact problems. He's going to be bigger. He's going to be stronger, more athletic. He's going to be comfortable. Um, so we'll constantly keep working with him. We'll watch film with him. You know, I, I was hard on him, you know, start the game, and I love him up, you know, when I see him tomorrow. Then get his confidence back up and get him ready to play and, uh, you know, have him ready for Rutgers. Mike, guess Seth turned it on in the second half offensively. Uh, what was the key to that, and how big was that in the eventual outcome of the game? Yeah, I just need him on the court. He's gotten in foul trouble now a couple of games in a row, and, uh, yeah, he, he's playing hard. He's competing. So sometimes he'll get some fouls. But you know, he, he didn't. You throw Wisconsin out because he never got in the rhythm. He, he was in and out of the game so much with foul trouble that you know, he couldn't get consistent. He couldn't give us anything consistently, um, which is hard to do, right? Same thing in the first half. But in the second half, he was aggressive. He was really aggressive, and like that's that's the set that we need. That's the set that's been good for us, and he's been that way really this whole season, right? A couple of games here or there, but he's been consistent. And you continue to look down; he's in double figures, and you know he didn't have a bunch of rebounds today, but he's been rebounding for us. He's been scored for us. He's been taking big shots and making them, and uh, we need him to keep playing like this. Mike, uh, we saw Evan get in foul trouble, I think, for the first time this year. How do you balance the, the kind of energy he brings while being like, hey, man, keep it under control and, and be able to stay in the game longer? Yeah, just um, who he's guarding, understanding that there's a bunch of people that he might be guarding, right? Some people, like Kanye's, who he's looking at at the Sky Report is going to be limited. And there's only so many people that he can guard. Like, we're asking Evan to guard everybody. So he's got to look up and down that, that list and know what each guy is doing. And, uh, you know, it's going to help him grow, grow more and understand it. But, you know, he's got to get his hands off people. I want him to guard people, and then he's got to get his hands off people so he's not getting hand check calls. And uh, he'll be okay. Like, he'll get a couple offensive rebounds over the back, but um, I'll take those because he's being aggressive. Two more. We'll start with Elvin. Hey, Mike. Uh, we saw Caleb for the first time tonight, and uh, tomorrow will be a month, uh, nine minutes. Where's he at right now, and um, you know, what's the kind of plan to get him back going? Yeah, he, he, um, you know, he was banged up a little bit, like nothing that was terrible. Um, but other guys have played well. Uh, but he's had really good practices, really, the last two weeks. Like, he was, he was a guy that, like, I was going to play him at Wisconsin because I thought that was like a speed game, right, like, um, that was an athlete game, right? You need you need guys out there that can move um, to to guard them. Uh, this was a game the same way. Derek Walker's a problem with how he faces from the perimeter and drives it and does some things. So I thought Caleb would do a pretty good job of, of guarding him on the perimeter when he went to go drive. Um, but then he he understands what we're doing offensively. He knows where to find the right the right cracks in the defense as well. And then he he's been playing with a lot of energy, like. Him crashing the boards and tipping it back out, like he does that in practice all the time. Uh, and for a team that doesn't get very many offensive rebounds, those are huge. Those are huge. So his energy and what he's doing, we got to try and get more of it from him. Um, I like that he was ready. Like he came in and was confident and was ready. Like you know, I, I get it. He missed the layup underneath that Pitt gave to him, but like, nope, that's okay, man. Like, don't hang your head on that. And that's the one thing. Sometimes he gets down on himself. He can't do that. He's got to continue to keep his head up, play hard. He's doing good things for us, and he's going to help us. He's going to be able to help us. He'll get his confidence where he needs to be. Uh, but he stepped in, and you know, nine huge minutes, two points, three rebounds doesn't seem like a lot, but um, I thought his energy was contagious for us when he checked in. Last question. I saw you shared a moment with Andrew post game. Just wondering if you could share, you know, what it was that you said to him. Yeah, I, I just asked him. Like, I went back to, this is a question before um, for the Purdue game. They were asking a bunch of questions and stuff. They were like, why, why are sheets? And I was like, I, I don't get a chance to experience why, why as much because they don't really have them here. Um, so I don't you know, get to Philadelphia as much. But I do, and I've tried it, but I'm, you know, one out of every couple times. So you got to get the same sandwich. You know, I'm a, I'm a culture guy or creature of habit, so I've gotten the same thing every time. And I asked him, like, how does that compare to Sheets? What's his order going to be? Um, 
he didn't really give me much in that moment. Uh, he was like all focused on the game. He's like, Coach, what about defense and this? And I was like, who cares, man? Wawa or sheets? And like, <laughs> let's get down to the real nitty gritty. And I don't know. He, did you ask him what I said? No. Good. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> now, I, I just talked to him about like, I thought this was a big game for us. Right? I thought this was a big, a, a huge game for us to win, especially at home. We want to play well at home. We got to hold serve at home and then try and go steal some on the road. And uh, the way he played, I thought was huge. And, and he spurred us to a huge win. So it was just a little congrats, congratulations for him. And uh, he was down, man. He was down after he missed those shots at Wisconsin. Right? Like he, he kind of put that on himself. And it wasn't. Right? He, he got two great looks at it. And I'm going to take them any day of the week, uh, but he was upset after that game, and for him to bounce back and respond like this, uh, I'm proud of him. That's what like seniors do, and he played 36 big minutes for us tonight.